My name is Mike Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor with Internal Revenue Service. Uh, former is the optimum word. I started IRS in 73, worked there for a decade. I've been in private practice ever since. As you can imagine, I've worked about 10,000 cases. I'm a national expert in IRS resolution matters, especially the offer and compromise. I actually taught the offer and pro, uh, compromise program at IRS to new IRS agents. I used to accept offers and deny offers. So uh, if, if, if I get a case and you retain me, I will probably tell you ahead of time whether your offer is going to be accepted. I, I want to throw a word of caution about offers and compromise because everyone hears the marketing and the advertising and everyone jumps on this great bandwagon. Oh man, settle your debt for pennies on a dollar. You call the firms and you're not speaking really to an expert. You're speaking to actually salespeople who are trying to hustle you out of your money and convince you that they can get an offer and compromise through. Then you wait about a year. This is what happens and they go, oh darn, the IRS didn't accept your offer and compromise. That's usually what happens. I'm going to think about 80% of the people out there uh, when you speak to them initially, have no idea how to get an offer accepted. Like I said, the larger companies, they hire salespeople. If you're going to go ahead and hire someone, you want to speak to the person doing the work on the offer and compromise. The person looking at the financial statement, the person explaining you the offer. I, I speak to so many people at the end of a week, and I go over the offer program, and this is what they say. Well, that person really didn't tell me that. Yeah, there's a reason they didn't tell you that, because they're trying to get your money. So let me explain the Offer and Compromise Program. It's simple, very simple. The Offer and Compromise Program, the formula consists of really two things. What are your assets and what is your income versus your expenses? Those are the two things. When I was looking at offers and accepting them, I want to know what your total liquidity is. That's it, liquidity. If you have $100,000 in liquidity, by the way, your home is discounted 20% of its homestead, um, and that's $100,000, I'm not going to settle the debt for any less than $100,000. Don't let anybody talk you in that, oh, IRS does this, and they don't. IRS is entitled to your liquidity. If you have an IRA, a pension, whatever's in the bank account, equity in the cars, if that comes to 100, IRS is not going to settle for less than 100. They're not going to do it, no matter what somebody tells you. Just It just doesn't work like that, okay? Just so you know. Um, the second thing that they do is they look at your income versus your expenses. So IRS is going to say, um, what are your uh, what are what is your income and what you don't know is that IRS IRS specifically um, has a certain amount of expenses that you're allowed to take in four categories food and clothing go to the irs.gov look at the national standard for food and clothing the next thing IRS will govern how much you can spend on housing and utilities Go to irs.gov, look up the national standard for housing and utilities. You click on your state and then your county, it'll tell you what they're going to allow. Then they're going to tell you how much you can spend on a car, and then they're going to tell you how much you can spend on driving the car around. So this formula is very tight. Then what IRS is going to do, they're going to look at your income, and they're going to look at your expenses, and they're going to try to take as many expenses away from you, because at the end of the day, they want a large bottom figure that says, hey, you can pay about $800 a month. Um, so you're going to have to pay us that $800. But here's the formula. They trick you. IRS wants $800 a month by the remaining statutes, the remaining uh, months on your statute. So if you've got five years left on your statute, that's a 60-month multiplier. IRS is going to add up your total liquidity, and they're going to multiply that 800 by 60, which represents five years. And that's how they compute the offer. So once again, IRS wants your total liquidity, and IRS wants the value of your money, because most people are above the standards. And if you have if you have eight years left on your statute, IRS is going to use a 96 multiplier. If you have $800 left over, they're going to multiply it by 96 because that's how much money you can pay them on a monthly basis. Don't get trapped. 
Do not get trapped in having someone says, I can do an offer and compromise, okay? Don't do that. Let someone go over. What we do is we Zoom with every single client. We get their financial statement. We put it on the screen, and we show them specifically how to get an offer and compromise accepted if you can. Remember, only 20% of offers and compromise are accepted. And remember, there is a formula. It's not left to judgment. It's not left to emotion. It's not left to sympathy. There's, it just doesn't work that way. So at the end of the day, know the formula. By the way, IRS has a pre-qualifier tool that you can go to, and they try to help you figure that out. So if you're going to call anybody, speak to the person that's going to work your offer and compromise and no one else. Tell the, the salesman to go take a hike. You have no idea how many calls I get and people have been ripped off. Anyway, we do free consultations. I can look at your offer. Uh, by the way, I need a subscription. If you're listening, IRS loves my uh, uh, IRS views subscriptions is cool. Give me a subscription, a like, a comment, send me an email. Thank you very much.